about a week or so ago, I asked you guys if you wanted me to play some more Yu-Gi-Oh! Astonishingly, the answer was yes. I then followed up my question by asking you, how would you like me to play this Yu-Gi-Oh! You told me to take it slow, enjoy my time, and leave you guys something to watch in the background just to hear me speak to you. I'm flattered, but I will oblige. Welcome to For Fun Friday, the show where I, your incredibly relaxed host, decides to play some Yu-Gi-Oh! with decks I happen to enjoy. There's nothing else to this one, folks. We're just gonna play some Yu-Gi-Oh! and enjoy our time doing so. No scores, nothing to keep track of, just me, some digital cardboard, and you. Now, for the first couple of minutes of this episode, I'm going to go over what has happened to the channel recently, where the channel is heading towards, and a bit other sort of informational stuff. If you just want to get into this video on the general structure this type of video will have going forward, there are timestamps down below to skip right to the deck tech section. Now, some of you may wonder where DTT disappeared to. Some of you read the post that I did on the Discord in order to understand, but for those that don't, let me quickly summarize it for you. DTT is now on Twitch only. Every Tuesday at 6pm GMT plus 2, I go live in order to, to attempt to build a deck with certain restrictions, confining myself to an archetype, in order to rate the deck and have fun doing so. All of this is done live, and it's saved as a VOD on Twitch for as long as I'm able to save them. If you miss the series from YouTube, seeing as it's now been retired, I do highly suggest you show up to Twitch when we're live, because it usually ends up being really funny. Now, for those that wonder why the series was retired to begin with, simply put, it failed to meet my own expectations. I put a lot of work into making a series that I thought would be... Well, let's just call it informational, to say the least. But what it turned out being was just a very, very rambly mess with me giving way too much information that wasn't needed, and it clearly showed. People weren't interested in it as much as I thought they would be, so I simply moved on from the project. I'm not looking to make any content that I don't enjoy making myself, and sometimes sacrifices have to be made in doing so. So DTT was retired, and it's now replaced with... While the new DTT, which is called Deck Test Tuesday, instead of Deck Tech Tuesday, over on Twitch every Tuesday. Now, where does this leave For Fun Friday? Well, For Fun Friday was something that just sort of crossed my mind when I thought about what I've made for the channel so far. I don't have any sort of way to share with you guys the love that I have for the game without a bunch of weird restrictions to it. I mean, Sealed Only obviously has the, the real restriction of being Sealed Only products, and Time Warped, you know, I'm sort of confined to whatever I get in my pool. I don't have a good way in order to just show you guys the game that I love, playing the things that I love. So that's what Forefront Friday is. This is definitely a series that you can just put in the background to have some background noise when you're doing your other work or whatever, because it's just going to be me talking to myself playing Yu-Gi-Oh! I may be informational sometimes, but I'm not going to force myself to really do anything. We're going to pick a deck, going to play five or so games with it, and just give you a general idea of what the deck can do, how well it stacks up against other decks, and why it's fun to play. Because let's be honest, if this game wasn't fun, why would we be playing it anyway? Now, for those that simply skipped this part, welcome back, or, I don't know, welcome, I guess. Today, we're going to play Cyber Dragons, which happens to be the DTT deck we built last Tuesday. This is not going to be the case every week for For Fun Friday, or FFF, but it is the case this week, because we happen to roll Cyber Dragons, which is one of my favorite decks of all time. I'm going to really quickly go over the deck here to make you understand a little bit of what we're playing, but if you just want to see the matches, you can skip ahead using the chapters down below. Now, of course, in Cyber Dragon, we're playing three of the regular Cyber Dragon himself. We don't necessarily want to see this in our hand ever, because it's a target for other cards in the deck, so he's just kind of there, in spirit. We then play three Galaxy Soldier, because this is one of the best ways we can consistently go into Infinity. We can send one other Light Monster from our hand to the graveyard to special summon this card in defense position. When it's
with Special Summon, we can add one more Galaxy Monster from a deck to our hand, but we can only use the fetching effect of Galaxy Soldier once per turn. Galaxy Soldier will search another Galaxy Soldier, which will hopefully be able to Special Summon itself using a monster in our hand. It's quite nice, and if it can't do a second Special Summon, usually it's enough to push for an Infinity no matter what. We're then playing 3 Cyber Dragon Core, being the best normal summon in the deck. When it is normal summoned, we can search any Cyber Spell or Trap card and add it to our hand. We have quite a few of those, but we'll get to them when we get to them. We're then playing 3 Cyber Dragon Hearse, which when Special Summoned allows it to become level 5, or if it is destroyed and sent to the graveyard, we can add one other Cyber Dragon from our deck to our hand. Generally speaking, we will use this to search core when we are able to, well, do anything. I accidentally right-clicked, so you just saw a copy to clipboard. This series doesn't have that much editing. It's relaxing. Next up, we have Cyber Dragon Nachter, or Nachter, or however you Germans pronounce it, I'm not entirely sure. Nexter? Nexter? Nickety knockety. Regardless, this name, as well as all of the other non Cyber Dragon Cyber Dragons, becomes Cyber Dragon while on the field or in the graveyard, which interacts with quite a few cards we own, so it's quite important. When this is normal special summon, we can target a machine monster with 2100 attack or defense in our graveyard and special summon it. Also, we can't special summon monsters except machines for the rest of the turn. This is very important for being able to get back a Cyber Dragon or any of the Exceed monsters from our graveyard, so it's quite neat. We are then playing a couple of auxiliary cards. We're playing the Dragoon Package and Dark Magician and Red Eyes Black Dragon, as well as three Ash Blossom and Joyous Spring, because it is simply the best hand trap probably ever made. For our spells, we're looking at three Cyber Emergency, which you've probably seen in Drytrons, but I promise you this is the archetype it was made for. We can add one Light Machine monster that cannot be normal summoned or set, or one Cyber Dragon monster from our deck to our hand. If the activation of this card is negated, we can discard a card to add this back to our hand, but we can only activate one Cyber Emergency once per turn. This card is actually great. It allows us to search nearly anything in the deck that we need at the time, which is usually core. We then have Cyber Repair Plant. If a Cyber Cyber Dragon is in our graveyard, we can activate one of these effects. We can add one Light Machine Monster from our deck to our hand, normally being Galaxy Soldier, or we can target one Light Machine Monster in our graveyard and shuffle that target back into the deck. If we have three or more Cyber Dragons when this card is activated in the graveyard, we can activate both effects at once. Generally speaking, this will usually be used to search Galaxy Soldier, and very rarely will we actually activate the second effect. When we do, it's usually to shuffle back an Infinity or a Nova back into the extra deck. It's still quite handy, so we're playing it at 3. We're then playing one Cyber Rev system, which just allows us to special summon one Cyber Dragon from our hand or graveyard. It's not very exciting when it comes down to it, but it is searchable off of core, and it's a basically a monster reborn, so we're gonna include it anyway. We're then playing three Machine Duplication, which is an incredibly important card to this deck, because it allows us to get almost an instantaneous infinity. If we normal summon Cyber Dragon Core, its name becomes Cyber Dragon when all the field, we activate Machine Duplication targeting core, and special summon two Cyber Dragons from our deck, overlaying them into no Nova that overlays into Infinity. It is a very, very powerful card, unfortunately not searchable by anything in the deck, but I digress. We're then playing one one for one, simply because we can and it can summon both hers or Nactor, depending on what we need. Let me turn on the limited so you can see it. We're playing one Overload Fusion, because this allows us to utilize our graveyard in order to summon things like Rampage Dragon or Overdragon if we're crazy. One Red Eyes Fusion for, well, Dragoon. We're then playing one Cyber Load Fusion, because this can use our banished cards in order to fusion summon any of the Cyber Dragons, which can actually be quite handy. Then, looking at the traps, we're playing three Infinite Impermanence, simply because it's a very good trap card sort of deal, and then we're playing Cybernetic Overflow, probably the best trap card in the entire archetype. We banish Cyber Dragons with different levels from our hand, face up field or graveyard, and then destroy an equal number of cards our opponent controls. If this card is destroyed by a card effect, we can add a Cyber Dragon spell trap card from a deck to our hand. So basically, if this card is targeted to be destroyed, we can flip it open to destroy something on our opponent's side of the field, and then get a... Uh, well, yeah, we get a Cyber Spell and Trap from our deck to our hand, as well as destroying cards. It's really good, okay? This is also searchable off of things like Core or Hearse. It's, it's great. There's no reason why we wouldn't be playing this. It's devastating under the right circumstances. So for the extra deck really quickly, we're playing Chimera Tech Mega Fleet Dragon, simply so we can deal with things in the extra monster zone. Chimera Tech Over Dragon, because it's really funny if we manage to summon this. I don't think I've used it once. Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon, which is really, really good as well, just to be able to sort of... 
it's it's good just because we can use it, basically. We then have Red Eyes Dark Dragoon, of course, being the big boy himself. Chimeratric Rampage Dragon to facilitate OTKs, as this can send two different Cyber Dragons from our deck to the graveyard to gain up to two extra attacks on that turn. We're playing two Cyber Dragon Infinity and two Cyber Dragon Nova. Infinity, of course, acting as our negate and attack position monster stealer, and Nova facilitating summoning Infinity to begin with. One Appalooza Bow of the Goddess to act as some extra monster negates. It is quite rare that we summon Appalooza, but it is a possibility, so it's there. One Unicorn to spin back troublesome cards. One Cyber Dragon Seeger, which allows us to get over our opponent's Dragoon or other beef stick monsters by being able to boost one of our Cyber Dragon monsters by 2100 attack in the battle phase. This also turns our Rampage Dragon into an actual monster at or 4,200 attack with three attacks in a turn is devastating. We then have Predapent Verti Anaconda to facilitate our fusion shenanigans, both for Dragoon and for Overload Fusion. One Link Karibo to link off any of our level ones, and an Almirage to link off our core. Our main goal in this deck is to go second, deal with the board in whatever way we possibly can, and beat in for a massive amount of damage with Rampage Dragon. I'm looking forward to it, so let's cut straight to the games. Alright, well, we got ourselves our first game of the day against Awizu. Now, keep in mind, when I do play these games, I am actually on uh, incognito mode. So, my opponent will not know that it is me. Let me zoom out here. For some reason, we now have six pinks whenever Pot of Extravagance is activated, which is kind of weird. However, Pot of Extravagance is an issue for us, so we are going to Ash Blossom this to stop him from drawing two cards, basically negging himself one plus six. He is going to activate Terraforming, which is probably bad for us, and he's going to get Grand Spiritual Art. This is gonna get interesting. Grand Spiritual Art is actually really good, but he is playing... Oh, he's playing Altergeist. Allow me to uh, not be a stupid dum-dum here and actually change it over to this, so you can now see Omega's secondary forms of uh, play, because there is, in fact, a top-down view as well. To make it a little bit easier for you, let me also change it over to Standard, because you're probably more used to cards looking like this. So, in our hand right now, it's not looking entirely great. We're going to go ahead and normal summon our core. Which is probably going to come with a solemn strike here. Oh, I'm dumb. I forgot he has the Ikira in which the first monster effect is going to get negated. But that is fine. We can summon the Almirage. Simply so we can set up for a following turn by setting our Overload Fusion and passing turn. Thanks to the uh, field spell here, which is Grand Spell Rod Ikirin, the first card that's activated every turn is going to get negated. I'm kind of a stupid dum-dum. Oh, and he has a second pot of extravagance in his hand. That's unfortunate. I don't really have anything to activate here, so I am forced to allow him to draw two, which really sucks, actually. But what can I do about it? We have one destruction here. He's going to summon another Silquitus. Silquitus is, of course, an issue, but it's not anything super, super bad. We're going to take a massive uh, heap of damage here, unfortunately. But again, there isn't much we can do about it. We just sort of have to take it. We'll take the, uh, the 800 plus 800. Almirage, unfortunately, biting the dust. This now raises an issue because this means he's going to have... Uh, two, uh, two effects to do here. He's gonna do that to bounce this card, which is interesting, because he has already set one. I think I'm actually going to activate the Cybernetic Overflow here. This is gonna allow me to destroy the Grand Spiritual Arc Ikirin in order to have a monster effect for next turn. I think that's the correct choice to do, and if it isn't, we'll find out. He will set a card here, one of them probably being a Solemn Strike or something of the like. Because this is Altergeist we're looking at here, and Altergeist does do a lot of fun things. We get a Cyber Dragon off the top, that's not bad actually. Uh, I think we're immediately just going to Special Summon the Cyber Dragon. We're not going to activate anything here, because I kind of want to force him to use his Altergeist Bounce if he has it. So we'll go to the battle face and simply beat into it. He will activate Spoofing. I kind of expected one of the cards to be spoofing. Shuffling back the Altergeist Siquitus here. Uh, we could do this if he summons it, but that is going to end our uh, battle phase, unfortunately, so we don't really have an option to do so. There is the Conquiry, which is, again, very logical, meaning if we do the attack here, we are uh, going to get hit with a Conquiry, which is unfortunate. Uh, that is going to allow him to stop us from doing what we want to do, and it is just a bad, bad time. 
Uh, we can't really do anything else here. We're just not going to attack, actually. We're just gonna let him have the Conquerian Hand, for all we really care. We can summon the Nactor. It is not gonna be able to do much, because our graveyard doesn't really have a Machine Monster. We have a Cybers. So we're just gonna set the Cyber Lord Fusion, and we're gonna pass turn. We're gonna allow him to summon what he wants to summon, because we don't really have any way of going around it. He's gonna shuffle back the Conquery here, which is kind of predicted. He's most likely gonna get a Multifaker. He's gonna get Marionetter, which is then going to get Multifaker, I'd assume. Uh, this is just an issue now. Hmm. Because with this, we would be able to... Uh, from one of the cards. We would be able to get a Rampage Dragon to de destroy two spell and trap cards here, which might be the correct call. Uh, I think we're gonna do that, because he doesn't have a negate on board yet. So we're gonna flip the Cyber Load Fusion. Now that he's shuffled the card away that we don't want, and we don't exactly mind him doing it again. Like, we don't mind him bouncing a card at this point, because that's not the problem. The problem is spoofing and whatever he has set here. He's gonna activate this to bounce that back to hand to bounce our Cyber Dragon, which is gonna make it fizzle, which is okay. He sets the protocol, we lose that card, but that's fine. If he chooses to do that, that is A-OK, -okay because we still have our Overload Fusion ready, which should allow us to do it anyway. That is a lot of spell and trap cards, though, which is incredibly unfortunate. Cyber Repair Plant, though, is actually probably very good here. We're going to activate the Nectar in hand, which pitches the Cyber Dragon. My hope here is that he, he can negate this if he wants, because if he destroys it, we still have Overload Fusion, which is... A-OK -okay in my book. We want to do this in order to get our thing back. Marionetter's going to be shuffled, which is probably going to get Multifaker this time. Yes, there's Multifaker. Okay. We're gonna special summon it in defense position for obvious reasons. We're gonna activate its effect in order to bring back the Cyber Dragon from the graveyard. Or try to. We're gonna be met with an Unpossessed. That's actually really interesting. That is, of course, gonna activate the Multifaker. Multifaker is going to be summoned and activating its effect in order to search for an Altergeist card. Rather, a special summoning one, which is going to be Conquery. Okay. Okay, that's really interesting. So he now has that negated. Uh-huh. Okay. I'm a little bit confused as to why he would choose to negate this now. Because I have to force myself to destroy this. Which I think I'm just... I'm just gonna go into battle and force him to do it now. Because I can special summon the Cyber Dragon again and that'll be fine. He will activate this, pulling back to Conquery in order to most likely bounce the Cyber Dragon? Yes. Okay, that's fine. We'll go main phase two. He still controls more cards than I do, so I can... Oh, I can't, shit, because I need to control nothing. Ooh, that is unfortunate, yeah. I still think I can do this, though, but I have to take a super weird route to do it. So we'll normal summon the Cyber Dragon here. This is the weirdest thing I'll do in a while, don't worry. We're going to activate the Cyber Repair Plant that I have in hand. We're going to add a Light-type Machine Monster from our deck to our hand. And we're going to add the Core for a following turn. If we can live that far. We hope we can. We're then going to activate Overload Fusion. Which I happen to have in my hand. Which is quite good. We are going to be forced to have it bounced back again, thanks to his Altergeist shenanigans, which is very unfortunate, but there's not entirely much we can do about it in this matchup. We just need to be able to destroy the spoofing and the thing in the back. Uh, we're going to go for the Rampage Dragon. We're going to use these two as material to summon the Rampage Dragon. We're going to activate Rampage Dragon's effect, and we're going to destroy the personal spoofing and the Altergeist protocol. Those are our two targets. He's going to activate the protocol, which makes sense. Which is probably going to negate the uh, the dragon here. Yep. That is unfortunate, because we did need to attempt to get rid of them. And now we simply have to pass turn and hope he doesn't find a good searcher. Well, he can, because he has spoofing. This is kind of the issue with cyber dragons in this deck, is that we don't have a lot of back row removal. So we're forced to fire things off left and right. Hoping to bait out things that we normally wouldn't be able to handle. And in this case, we're going to take the fat one for it. There's uh, not much more we can say to that. We do have core available to us now, though, which is good. 
He does still have protocol, unfortunately, so he can negate one monster effect and send it to the graveyard if he wants to. And Ash Blossom is a little bit too late, unfortunately, but we will normal summon the core anyway. It gets auto-activated. I'm not allowed to skip its effect. He's most likely going to protocol this. Yep. Sending the multifaker, which will destroy the core, unfortunately. The core in the graveyard is not a terrible position to be in, though. Simply because core in the graveyard would allow us to activate its effect again, hopefully. Uh, we will actually Ash Blossom this to make sure he does not get a spoofing trigger. This will mean he has shuffled back a card in order to attempt to search what he needed, which means he needs to do it now. He will actually get rid of his Negate Trap, which is interesting to draw into Marionetter, which is unfortunately just going to get it back. That really sucks. Well, there is Marionetter. Marionetter is going to bring back the Altergeist Protocol, most likely. I'm going to assume at the very least. Yes, Protocol comes back. Oh, this control deck is so rough. Be like, we need... Harpies, <laughs> but unfortunately it's not in the deck. Alright, we get punched for another 1600 here. It is looking like we are going to bite the fat one on this. Secret Village of the Spellcaster comes out as well, which is absolutely going to ruin us because we can no longer use spell cards. Yikes. And there's a one for one, which is not going to do anything anyway. So we will go for the core effect in Graveyard here, which he is most likely going to spoof. He is not spoofing it, which is super interesting, actually. Uh, he got rid of his Conquadiri, so he doesn't have it anymore. Uh, we do actually have a Cyber Dr Oh, no, it's Rampage Dragon, so it doesn't count as a Cyber Dragon. Hers does not do us anything in this particular situation. I think the correct summon is actually just a regular Cyber Dragon. It's really wonky and weird. But that's kind of what we have to do. He has the protocol. He has the possessed partnerships, which is unfortunate. So he can get out the Silquitus, which is going to destroy the Cyber Dragon. And that is basically game to Altergeist, unfortunately. The control matchup here definitely bit us in the buttocks. Because there isn't much we can do to handle this level of, uh, this level of shenanigans. Well played to the man. We'll simply go to game number two. Alright, we're hopping straight into game number two against a name which I am not intelligent enough to pronounce. I don't know what's going on there, and I'm going to choose not to judge. Let's see if they decide to pick the rock, paper, scissors. They pick the scissors, we'll go paper strat. Paper strat all the way. Except I just picked scissors, but th th don't mind me. Come on, do it. Come on, do it. I want to play Yu-Gi-Oh. This man is most likely AFK. It would not surprise me. But we actually do get to do our thing. We're going to choose to go second again because we're playing Cyber Dragons. Wish her opponent best of luck. And here we go. Our starting hand is somewhat decent, having access to core uh, rev system and stuff. Pot of Extravagance is going to banish six cards to draw two again. Dream Mirror. Okay, this archetype's really wonky and weird, and I never remember what it does. But basically, with the help of Dream Mirror of Joy and Dream Mirror of Chaos, you can swap in between light and dark monsters at a whim. And it's just really weird. I never understand what this thing does. But I suppose we'll find out here. As he normal summons himself, Ekelos, the Dream Mirror Sprite, setting three with Dream Mirror of Joy up. That's not half bad. Not half bad at all. We'll see if he activates anything here during our standby. He's going to activate Dream Mirror Hypnagogia, which chooses a Dream Mirror Joy and one Dream Mirror Terror from a hand of deck, and place one in either field zone. So now he now has both Joy and Terror active at the same time. We're going to activate Cyber Emergency starting off here. He's going to activate a Kelos, which is going to allow him to special summon a Kelos Dream Mirror Mara. But I don't think that matters too much to us right now. We're going to go ahead and grab a hearse for later. Because this is basically a good summon to have. We do have Cyber Rev System active here. Mara is going to tag out as well, apparently here. To get the Dreamer Sprite back, which is going to be activated because it was summoned using its dark version, allowing you to draw, draw Mirror Phantasms to hand. That's quite interesting. Okay, we're going to go ahead and summon our core. Core is going to activate. We are going to attempt to search a cyber card off of this, even though we have literally all of them in our hand already, which is 
unfortunate, but that is the way it is. Uh, due to this, we are actually going to search Cybernetic Overflow, because we don't really have another search target. It's kind of weird. We're going to activate Machine Duplication, targeting our Cyber Dragon Core in order to Special Summon two Cyber Dragons from our deck, which is massive. With the two Cyber Dragons now ready, we are going to overlay straight for a Nova. Which is going to get Solemn Judgmented, which is kind of okay. We're going to activate Nova's effect now that it was negated, which will allow us to Special Summon the Cyber... Or rather, the Rampage Dragon, actually, I apologize. Uh, with that in mind, that is kind of bad, actually. We're going to activate Cyber Repair Plant here. This is going to let us add a Light-type monster, which we're going to go for the Galaxy Soldier. We are going to activate the Galaxy Soldier here, which is going to send the Hearse, and we're going to summon the Galaxy Soldier. We're going to activate the Soldier effect, and then activate the Hearse effect. Hearse is going to add us a Cyber Dragon to hand, and then a Galaxy Soldier to hand. We are then going to activate Galaxy Soldier, sending the Cyber Dragon, Special Summoning Galaxy Soldier. We're going to overlay for the second Nova in our deck. We're going to activate Nova's effect to Special Summon a Cyber Dragon, because we pitched quite a few of them here. And after that, we're going to overlay it for an Infinity. So we now have a Negade on board and quite a lot of damage waiting, which is really, really nice. For the absolute kicker here, though, we are going to go into Predaplant Verte Anaconda, activating our Cyber Rev System. Rev System is going to allow us to special summon back one of our Cyber Dragons for some additional damage. Activating the Predaplant Verte Anaconda in order to send our Red Ice Fusion. Of course, summoning the Dragoon Man himself for an additional negate and some destruction power. And we're simply gonna activate Dragoon's effect, destroying the Dream Mirror Spirit, and head into Battle Phase. We don't even need the additional attacks off a of Rampage Dragon here, which is why I didn't activate it, because we are just going to punch in as hard as we can, and end the game. That is a very swift OTK to show what Cyber Dragons are capable of, even if we're playing up against Dream Mirror. Alright, game number three. Alright, game number three against Schmimmelbrot 2, if that is how you pronounce your name. I do like the Queen Tiramisu picture, though. I'm very into that. I will remind you again that when I am playing these games, I am always in incognito, so you will not know it's me. Alright, we are forced to go first here, which is actually terrible for us, because it is not something we generally want to do here. We're going to activate Nactor, sending the Cyber Dragon, special summoning it, which is going to allow it to activate its effect to recover the Cyber Dragon we just pitched. It's not a great play, but it is the play we have. Uh, this unfortunately locks us into machines, which is as bad as you can probably guess that it is, because we would need to go into Anaconda to do anything. So unfortunately, we are going to have to end on a Seeger here, activating the Cyber Repair Plant, allowing us to search for a machine-type monster, which is going to allow us to get the Core. Core, luckily, can be normal summon, so we are going to activate the Core effect in order to grab ourselves any of the Cyber Spells and Traps here. It's kind of a weird position to be in, because we are locked into machines. Cyber Emergency could allow us to find something, Cyber Rev System, similarly. But we're unable to get two level 5s onto the board this turn, I'm decently sure. Mm, am I, though? We could Cyber Load Fusion for something at quick speed, but that's not great either. Uh, no, we're just going to take ourselves to Cybernetic Overflow. I'm going to set the Cybernetic Overflow. We are just going to pass turn on that. It's a bit wonky and weird, but we do have two destructions and an impermanence. It's something. Going first is not what we specialize in. We are going to be hit with the Thunder King Lightning Strike Kaiju, however, so our Seeger is no more. Grand Maju is going to hit the field, which is very interesting, at a 0-0 zero, zero currently. Not entirely sure why Grand Maju was summoned. Sure, battle phase, go ahead. I'm very confused. Okay. Inferno Tempest is what we're going to be hit with here. That is a super interesting way to do this. Oh, I should have expected that. That is a cool-ass thing. Unfortunately, we're currently lethal on the board. Mystic Mine, that should come as an expected card, but we will destroy it using Overflow during the turn pass here. Uh-huh. How many do we have? Oh, can we even do this? Oh, we can, because we can use Core to get rid of that. Nice. This is going to get super wonky. I do like it, though. Uh, we will go to End Phase. We will activate this. Banishing the Core to destroy the Mystic Mine. 
We don't have any other monster in deck now because they were unfortunately all banished. So we will go for the Cyber Dragon Nectar. We could overlay these for something, but that doesn't do us anything because everything is banished. We will attack for a lot of damage here, hoping that he doesn't have anything else. And even if he does, we do have one more overflow here. We do only have one turn, unfortunately, but uh, this overflow can banish the Nectar to destroy Mystic Mine in case it pops up. So we'll see what happens. If he has the second Mystic Mine, I will simply have to do it. He's going to Allure, which is unfortunate. Drawing two cards. He is now out of cards, having nothing in the deck left. Meaning he has to scoop, because he failed to mill us out. <laughs> Whatever that deck was, that's hilarious. But apparently Cyber Dragons could just do it. Game number four. Right, we're going into game number four against Passipede. Passipede? Passe whatever. Let's see what we can do. Our starting hand is... not good. We have no interaction for our opponent's turn, so we're simply forced to uh, sit and wait and hope our opponent doesn't absolutely clobber us. But we're playing up against Fluffles, which is generally a good thing to be going second against, because Fluffle, equally as us, is an OTK deck. However, they have the marvelous power of being able to abuse Toy Vendor, as it is one of the best cards ever, at least in my humble opinion. It just does everything for the archetype. It's great. Now, this does mean, however, that we're probably going to be staring down an Appalooza with a lot of negates on it, which is incredibly unfortunate. But we should be able to get around that with the cards we have in hand, if we're lucky. It's not, it's not super likely, but we'll see. Fluffle Sheep is going to be on the board. He does have his turn ready here to do a bunch of shenanigans, which is not exactly something I like. Artifact Dagda is going to come out, mostly because it is a generic, and his hand is absolutely loaded at this point. Unfortunate, I'm going to say, but it is what it is. We're going to special summon the Cyber Dragon from our hand, simply because he will now see what we're up to, and he could attempt to destroy this if he's... Uh, he is going to, actually. Going for the Edge Gym Scythe immediately here in order to activate a fusion, which is most likely going to be a Cruel Whale. Cruel Whale comes down and he has to discard one card on each player's field, but Dagda is going to allow him to set Scythe, meaning he's going to lock us out of the extra deck. This is incredibly unfortunate, because we do kind of need our extra deck in order to succeed with this deck, but we'll see what we can do. Uh, hmm. This is actually really, really bad here, but I think we can kind of abuse the fact that he's playing with Cruel Whale? We'll see. We're gonna normal summon our hearse, simply because we need a target for our machine duplication. If we get to machine dupe out to Cyber Dragons here, we are actually kind of in the clear. But we don't. We get- okay. That's unfortunate. So we get Effect Veilard, which is forcing us to only get one that has the same name. However, with this one, we can activate it to make it level 5, which is not going to matter, unfortunately. We can't summon anything from our extra deck this turn, so we're simply going to set ourselves the Cyberload Fusion and pass the turn over, which is going to activate Cruel Whale, unfortunately. Sending a, to uh, a Fright for Repair, actually, not a Toy Vendor. I forget the name of that constantly. And this is very, very bad for us, because Cyberlord Fusion is now our best target for anything. Fight for Repair is going to be banished in order to search for a uh, Fluffle or Edge Imp. Fluffle Dog is going to be the option, which is most likely the correct one here. That is a very unfortunate way of having to deal with what we had to deal with there. Uh, we can't really do anything about Penguin. One for One is going to be activated, which is really bad for us, because this probably spells the end of the game. It's going to bring out Octopus. Octopus is not going to get its effect. Oh, it is actually, but Edge and uh, Scissors go first. We can pop back row here, but there isn't really much else we can do. Fright for Patchwork is going to come out, which is going to absolutely eradicate us, most likely. Patchwork is going to be activated. We have no reason to destroy this, because it's going to search for polymerization and one of the Edge Imps, I believe. Oh, this is super unfortunate. The fact that he's playing Scythe to such a good degree as well is uh, sad. But that is what Dagda is really good at. When an effect of another field is activated, you can just set an artifact. You activate Cruel Whale to pop something. You set the Scythe, immediately locking your opponent out of doing anything. It's really good. Tiger's gonna come down here. Uh, destroy them. Right, he's going to attempt to pop all of our cards here, which is real bad. We are actually gonna have to chain Overload Fusion here. And here we have the choice of going into Overdragon, which isn't really big enough to do anything. It's a 2400, so that's not going to do much. And the Rampage Dragon is equally not going to do much. 
So for the funnies, let's just summon the Overdragon here. Simply because I can't really do anything. It's a 1600 do-nothing. It is going to activate, which is, you know, fun, I guess. But it is not going to be enough against the Fluffles, I don't believe. The starting hand of this Fluffle was really, really good, having everything they needed going first, which is usually a weakness of the Fluffles, but they do have some plays going first as well. He's simply going to go into battle phase here, which is going to be more than enough to just delete us off of the face of the earth, so we'll scoop them up, and we'll go for the last game of the day. Alright, for the last game of the day, we're playing against Yusef BNL, or whatever that's supposed to be. We, uh, we go for the Fist Gang. Fist Gang is our way of doing things. We will fist until we get there. Stop bro fist- Stop bro fisting me, man! I'm gonna keep doing it! I'm gonna keep doing it! Thank you. I will continue to do it until you choose not to. Our starting hand for- Ooh, we're going first. I don't know if I necessarily like that. We're gonna- Oh, I don't want to activate that, because that would just be real bad. Uh, we're gonna do a one for one here. We're going to send the Cyber Dragon, which is going to get Hearse. We're gonna activate Hearse. And we're then going to go for the Nectar, sending the Dark Magician, which is going to allow us to special summon the Cyber Dragon from our graveyard. Now we have two level 5 Cyber Dragons on board, so we're actually good for doing Nova. We're not going to activate Nova's effect here because we don't have a target in the deck for it, so we're simply going to quickly overlay for the Infinity in order to have a Negate ready, going for the Infinite Impermanence and passing turn, because again, we don't want to go first. It's not the best. We now have one Negate and one Impermanence in the back, so two interactions, that's hopefully enough to carry us through a turn. Our hand is then, of course, empty, meaning we're kind of screwed. A Kaiju here is basically game over. We're going to be met with a trade-in, pitching a Galaxy Knight. So this is going to be very, very interesting, but I am going to choose to let that go because we need to hit a couple of Galaxy Monsters to really, really have an effect on this. Drawing two cards in my world does nothing compared to what I have to stop. There is a Photon Trasher. That is kind of neat, meaning he most likely has another level 4 on board in order to enable some sort of Exceed play here. He does have Photon Advancer. He is going for it immediately, which makes sense to me. And he then has Photon Vanisher as well. He has the full squad. Um, you can special... Uh, you can add a Photon Dragon. This I'm actually going to hit with the Impermanence, because I want to save the Infinity Negate for something else. However, being able to search his dragon is terrible for us, so we're going to make sure that he can't do it. Galaxy Eyes has the... Very, very good potential of doing rank 8 spam, but they need their dragons in hand through their searchers. If we can stop their searchers, generally speaking, we're very well off. Now, we only have one more interaction here, unfortunately, meaning that if he has one of the dragons in hand, we are kind of screwed. He could simply summon it, beat over our infinity, and we're sitting on nothing. If he doesn't, however, we're actually kind of in the clear. Which would be nice. Again, I have severe doubts about it, but uh, you get the you get the gist. This is Cyber Dragons. We do dragon things. Well, this is surely taking a while, so let me get back to you when uh, this player comes back, if he does. Oh, well, player is interacting here and is choosing to overlay for Starge Leech Lord Galaxion. Once per turn, you can detach a bunch of Xe material to special summon a Galaxy S Photon Dragon or special summon a Galaxy S Photon Dragon from your deck. He is going to attempt to special summon from deck here. Uh, I will have to hit this with the Infinity Negate. There is no debating that. That cannot be allowed to stay. We're going to activate Cyber Dragon Hearse's effect here to search for a Cyber Dragon. Just so we have a card in hand for a follow-up turn, essentially. I don't think we'll actually get to use it. But, you know, there might be a case. He is going to set one. Did that- oh, that actually ends his turn. Okay, setting one is really good for us here. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna activate Infinity's effect in order to snatch that Photon Advancer to make sure we have more material underneath. 
We are going to go ahead and normal summon the hearse, which is very bad. Don't do this under any circumstances ever. You should know this. Uh, but we're doing this simply so we can get rid of these to go for Anaconda. We're going to activate Hearse's effect in the graveyard again to search ourselves for the Nectar and Graveyard, probably. We're going to activate Anaconda's effect, of course, going into the uh, Overlord Fusion here is actually, yeah, because we are locked to machinery. We're going to go for the Rampage Dragon. We're going to get rid of both of the Hearse's. We're going to activate Rampage Dragon, getting rid of whatever that set card is. It was a Galaxy Expedition. Going to activate Rampage Dragon and send ourselves a Core and a Nectar. We haven't used any of their effects this turn, but that is not going to end up mattering. We're going to go to the battle phase. We now have three attacks on our Rampage Dragon. There's one. There's two. Leaving the field empty against Cyber Dragon is incredibly dangerous. There is three, and Infinity is going to end this game without a scratch, as our two negates was apparently enough to seal the deal. Alright, that went better than expected. I'll see you in the end game. Alright, and that's it, ladies and gentlemen. We've just played a couple of games of Cyber Dragon. Now, what do we think? Honestly, Cyber Dragon is a super cool archetype. It's incredibly nostalgic for anyone that's played Yu-Gi-Oh! before and watched nearly any of the animes. Not only did it completely turn the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! around back in the day, it still kind of holds up today. Does it struggle? Yeah, a little bit. The thing with them is you need your Cyber Dragons to resolve in order to go into Infinity or, you know, any of the other fusions you need access to. And if you can't do that, the deck can do very, very little. Especially in the game we had against Altergeist, it's very apparent that when we struggle, we really struggle. However, when we get to do our own race, it is very clear that the OTK potential of this deck is out of this world. Most of the cards in this deck as well, if we're not counting Dragoon, are relatively affordable. Like, if you wanted to invest into Yu-Gi-Oh! and play a deck that's fun, this is definitely one of them. I would highly recommend it. Take it online, give it a spin, do what you want to do. Now, in case you want to play this deck specifically, there is an Omega deck code at the bottom of the description that you can simply copy into the game, and I will show you exactly how to do that by going into the import function and selecting clipboard deck. Doing that as long as you have the deck saved and, you know, you control C to the code, it will import the deck for you just as it appears right here. Of course, the side deck is left empty because this wasn't meant to be used in matches. Now, if you enjoyed this new type of content, do make sure to leave a like and a comment down below, because the more interaction this video gets, the more likely I am to make more of them. If you would like to see a specific deck being done on either this or live streamed on DTT, you can check out the Patreon or YouTube membership, where one of the ranks, namely Tour Guide's Treats, allows you to request a deck for me to do. If it's on this show, you get to select the deck yourself. Just send me a deck list and I'll give it a go. I might change some things if I don't like it, but you get the gist. And on DTT, the archetype's all yours. Now, as always, I hope you enjoy your oncoming weekend. Grab yourselves a cup of coffee. And remember to stay safe out there.